この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for No No Be Ori Repeat, episode 11 and maybe 12. That's all I'm gonna say here at the beginning. Let's watch the episode. Beep beep timer. No No Be Ori, let's go. Hello, Gato. Oh. Oh. Okay, festival. Mmm. Product placement. Product placement. <laughs> oh. She wants a phone? Does she not have a phone? Not what I care about. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, not, but, uh, 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 <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> fuck. I, that's, that's what I, yeah. <laughs> great. <laughs> great. Very good. I think that was a little fly that just flew by me. Weird. It's because I had the window open all, all of yesterday. Little bastards. I beat. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the mark of an adult. Yes. She wants a phone. Uh huh. Fully useless. What does it even do? <laughs> Mary. Oh. No, not not back then. <laughs> yeah, don't look how much you die. <laughs> Oh. Oh, just like that. Ding. Oh. Meru. <laughs> okay. Oh god, oh god, I had the most incredible experience. I got to eat breakfast at McDonald's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's just like, huh. 
McDonald's is not even good. <laughs> Oh. Imply that you're... Yeah, yeah! <laughs> you have to, every time you have to go out to the yard and stand up like that? <laughs> That's not good. Oh, how does it work? <laughs> oh my god I always hated that that format it's not see okay oh. sorry <laughs> oh. she's too short she's too short Right? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> She's too short. <laughs> Don't say it. Oh, no. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Just jump. Mm-hmm. You're gonna fail. You're gonna you're gonna mess it all up. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. This is bad. Not with a phone in your hand. Come on, please no. <gasps> nope. Oh, Fuck. God, do do not jump without practice. I, I was just talking to somebody about this. Of course not. That's, yes, yes, yes. The internal hurt is what really hurts. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta climb on her back. Oh, that is a strong girl. Ah! All by myself. Uh huh. Yep, no external assistance whatsoever. You should not. Icing is a bad idea. Provably. Oh, she's walking fine, so it'll be fine. Ah, oh, yeah. A step toward adulthood. Got your email. It's yeah, 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 yeah. It's Komari. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, we're calming out. Why is my phone buzzing? It is a meme. Hmm. You have to. Oh, this is a different take? Yep. What? <laughs> hmm. Is she gonna draw monkeys? Are they going to be super duper detailed? That's what you do. I 
I'd love to Family Guy flash through these and have, yep, exactly. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, oh, my, my titled artistic work. Why not? She's a genius, man. We'll see. Yeah, what are you drawing? Oop. Oh. You'll ruin the process. You'll ruin the process. It's important. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> The what? The what? 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 <laughs> that was like a that was like Nietzsche Joe stuff. What the fuck? I, yeah, I full, yeah. What? Uh, Renge. Renge just like completely boggled my metaphysical understanding of everything. What? What are Sosunzers? I need to know. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> She's gonna try to see what she's drawing. Fucking dumb idiot. But <laughs> so sneaky. He <laughs> Completely acting like a bad guy. Hmm. <laughs> I believe it. I would not try to manipulate or mess around with Renge. Is this where we're going, JoJo's? Oh God. You are you are assaulting me. You are assaulting me. I will defend myself. Oh. Oh something broke. So, so sorry. <laughs> what? What is she hitting? What is she doing? What the fuck? I don't believe you. What the fuck? I don't know what it's going to be, man. Yep. 
It's a monkey. Huh. Why didn't you draw this weird? What are you doing? What are you up to, Range? Is it something weirder upside down? I was wondering why it was so white looking. It's because they were going to make this upside down joke. <laughs> yeah. Bah. Meh. Huh, I didn't know that sheeps go meh in Japan. It makes sense. It's like cats go nya instead of meow, of course. I think dogs go wan wan. What you trying to say? <laughs> yeah, come on. What are you trying to say, Mom? The fuck? That's true. That's true. That's true. It's embarrassing because you're dumb. <laughs> Play stupid games. Get stupid prizes, Komari. What are these? Oh, it must be... No, it's winter, right? Okay, so it's already been harvested. But it, it, her her self awareness and maturity is her maturity, right? Like that's the the difference. It's great. It's great. Oh, hello, Nagashia. Oh, maybe not. Just a lady on a scooter. I was wrong. Cute little sequence here. Are we going back to her house to prove what we what she's said before? Yep. <laughs> Perfectly childish. Little slippers. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> it's just always so terrifying. This dog looking at her like, what the fuck are you even... You have me. Why do you need this? Dogs like snack. Mm -hmm. Ooh, fun. I would not play with him. Oh.
Hmm. Hmm. This is overly cute. It's almost disgusting. It's it's saccharine. Sickly, sickly sweet. Oh my god. Hmm. Are we making emoji? Yep. Woo. Oh, it's New Year's, of course. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see. She's pretty different. Exactly. That's, she just got it though. Nailed it. But you always make it one. But you always make it one. Oh, she really does have a childish side. Amazing. Hmm. There's a lesson here, but I'm not sure what it is. I'll let it play out, because I want to see what the little preview thing is. God, that whole sequence with the Sonsons or Sonsonsers or whatever. What the fuck? Renge. What? what? Ah. It's hard to deal with a literal genius child who is just smarter than me. It's like, what do you do with that? What do you do with that? Sweet. Hmm. Okay, Com cuteness and reminiscence. Great. Good. I think that's a good look for the last episode of the season to focus on reminiscence and nostalgia. At least that's what it appears from the um, from the preview to be. And I think that's effective. I think that's one of the things that this show is best at accomplishing. So doing that some more would be great. Um, this episode is a little bit different. It's a little bit. F I mean, we get some of the Renge focus. This is a silly, a silliness episode. So I'm expecting that the final episode will be less silly and more not somber, but nostalgic and emotion driven. And I'm down for that. I think that's that's great. Okay, so Komari being silly and and childish is childish and normal um, uh, for that first sequence. We move into here, we do the whole no service thing. 
the whole dot com gag joke is wonderful, and the slow. This is another thing that the show does really well: are these slow dawning re revelations or realizations of the reason that something is happening before the characters realize it. For example, she holds up the phone and doesn't get any service. It's like, why is that? Oh shit, she's too short. This is gonna become a thing, and she's going to respond to it as though it's a thing, and does exactly that. Right? That's it's it's really solid. It's I thought the the gag is very funny. It ends up being very understated and uh, like a slow burn gag that we as the audience members get as it's happening and we're just watching to wait for it to play out and see how it impacts the characters who are being uh, affected by it themselves. I, I think that's really good. It's one of the things that the show does extraordinarily well and I have to reset. Okay, so uh, uh, great faces, great gag stuff, very good. And I have to... I have to, have to. It's one of the, the like two things that I've written down for this episode. Jumping. Um... Here's the here's the thing. Jumping is kind of dangerous, like in a in a in a serious way. And the reason I bring this up in particular is because I was actually thinking about the topic recently because I was at the at the gym the other day and I saw a personal trainer training uh, uh, an older older gentleman and giving him exercises and having him perform them. And I think it was probably their first session. It seemed to be based on the way that they were interacting and talking. And one of the things that the trainer had this guy doing was not high, but short, low box jumps. So jumping up onto a, a, a platform that's about, I don't know, it was maybe eight inches, maybe, maybe eight or ten inches. Um, eight or 10 inch box jump and then jumping off. And immediately as, as I saw this, like it, it was, it was one of those situations where you see somebody who has like has certif certifications obviously, and is working as a personal trainer doing something that's absolutely absurd. And the reason for that is that most people don't have the conditioning to perform jumping maneuvers unless they condition themselves to it. Uh, uh, if you are not conditioned to jump, if you haven't jumped recently, if you haven't been jumping and landing on your feet, um, and, and experience and building up the shock absorption capabilities of your feet and your ankles and your knees, it's really easy to hurt yourself even on really low, low impact jumps um, because of the nature of, of the movement if you're not conditioned to it. Um, um, if you want to get conditioned for jumping, start by like jumping rope, right? Like literally moving yourself an inch or two off of the ground repeatedly for, for as much volume as you can and conditioning your joints and ligaments for high impact stress. Um, it's a little bit easier if you're into, if you do like a lot of running or things like that, where the impact is already there and you're used to impact on your knees. Not that I necessarily would recommend running because of the impact of the knees. I don't think it's a good idea mostly, but, but jumping in particular dangerous. And the reason I bring this up is like, when was the last time you sitting here watching me, when was the last time you jumped off of something or onto something? For a lot of people, now the answer might be, I don't know, like a couple days ago, I, I jump on things all the time, I parkour, like whatever. Great. That would indicate that you're conditioned to it, right? Like you've been doing this for a little bit. If you haven't though, when was the last time that you jumped? Weeks? Months? Years? For me, it's, it's more recent because like I do vertical jumps as part of some of my training, but like a while since I've actively jumped. It's not a smart thing to do if you're not conditioned to do it. Like go going and playing basketball when you haven't been playing basketball and trying to jump for like a jump shot or jump to 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 do a layup. People break their fucking ankles all the time doing that shit. And and so it's something to be very wary of because it seems like it's something that your body should be capable of. You're like, "Yeah, sure. I'm just jumping a foot in the air." Okay. Have you jumped recently? Have you jumped more than an inch recently? Is that actually a safe thing for you to be doing without at least a couple weeks of preparation? The answer is usually no. Be careful with jumping. And so Komari, who is a child who runs around everywhere and jumps all over the place, less danger there. Jumps, doesn't get it. Bam, wham, boom, bang, and hurts herself. Um, so I wanted to bring that up in a totally irrelevant context, but for real, don't don't fuck around with this shit. You can you can seriously injure yourself, and and some of the injuries that you can get to your ankles and feet and knees and and joints are not injuries that heal completely, and and you will be like, it it will it will cause problems for you for your entire life. Don't fuck with it. Don't fuck with it. Don't fuck with it. It's really important. 
Okay. So we move through the sequence, and and we bring up Komari's maturity again. We've done this many times, and we do this nice slow transition with the the things um, um, bubbling and and just still objects. I think this is really effective for changing gears, switching tones through the episode. Excuse me, switching tones through the episode. Really good. Okay, I love Renge. We all love Renge. Renge gets to draw a thing. The amount of tension that we build around wanting to know what Renge is drawing, and we sort of sit in in Hikane's perspective because we want to know what she's drawing too, because we know from the past that she's a really interesting artist. Um, this whole thing is really cool. I think this is a super cool piece of art, and uh, this is exactly what 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 she should have been drawing. What does she end up calling it? Despair, distress. Ah, uh, yes, I made distress. The idea of, like, a, a person her age creating an artistic piece that um, encompasses an emotion as opposed to just a drawing of something that she can see or something that she imagines. Something that she imagines that actually accomplishes conveying an emotion and is titled to do so. That's ingenious. That, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, child? You shouldn't get that creative with people's portraits. Bullshit. She should do whatever the fuck she wants. She's the genius. Um, I love the way that her, her dialogue changes and she does start acting like a bad guy. And it gets very nice and goofy. There is a good sight gag here. And then the so soon sir doesn't make any fucking sense. And then this is absurd. This is pure Nichijou stuff. In fact, I wonder if there are Nichijou animators animating this. Kyoani animators or something. I don't know. It's very much in that realm, though. It's just that pure absurdity, like, or the sheep thing, or, or any of those things, but it's all imagined. It's really silly. Um, I wanted to point this out because I think it's sort of relevant to later. This is an adult. Now, we know she's a weird, goofy adult, but this is an adult. She is spending her time chillaxing in a massage chair and drinking tea, probably. This is an adult thing to do. Okay? I want to keep that in mind for later. All right, binoculars, sneakification, no, 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 and the fight. Uh, battle, battle, battle here. So we start getting really interesting with the framing here, where we're doing depth of field stuff. Into the attack, into the battle, into the knockdown, into this flurry of insanity where she's poking her in the collarbone. Um, this is pretty sick. This is some JoJo's attack rush shit. Why? Music is great. Sequence is absurd. I have no idea what's actually happening. It's a really cool sequence, though. Very fun. Very enjoyable. And she finishes, and it's a monkey sheep. Great. Other half. Other half. So the other half is about Hotaru's acting more mature than everybody else. Um, You're so mature, Hotaru-chan. Nothing like my girls. Jeez, Mom, it's not a competition. She says, although she always makes it a competition. Oh no, I'm still just a kid. That modesty of yours is what makes you so mature. I agree to an extent. Oh no, I'm still just a kid. Ha ha, no, no, no. But it's not modesty necessarily. I, I agree to an extent. The, the act of modesty in this sense, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually that mature, does make her mature. But I don't think it's modesty. I think it's accurate. And I think it's the self-awareness that's present that makes her mature. I am aware of my childish tendencies. This is acceptable to me, and they are confined to the most part to outbursts of excitement or when I'm with my mother. However, I do not hate myself for them. I do not degrade myself for them. I recognize that childish tendencies are a part of my being, and that's fine. Is there anything wrong with being excited about your favorite food or jumping on the couch and telling somebody that you care about how your day was? Or asking if you can have a snack and then deciding you don't want a snack because you actually want the, the, the dinner? Like, no. None of these things are necessarily immature or bad. They are, to some extent, childish. But that's a healthy thing to incorporate, I think. I think a, a piece of maturity, and I think the show is arguing this, is no longer attempting to be mature. And in fact, I would say that cherishing and relishing the parts of you that are still childish that are less calcified that are less stony that are less um um you know stuck is a huge part of maturity that value of childishness i think i think that um 
I think that this is this is always true. I think that as people age, if they're not mm, crotchety as hell, if they don't end up taking in and consuming and becoming bitter from the bitterness of the world around them, then they end up as they age out of the like the section between like 20 and maybe 40 people over 40 over 50 start to not give a fuck and start to just be like i want to do the thing that i want to do and nobody can tell me otherwise sort of it's not even regression toward childishness it's a it's a oh i guess these social norms that make me an adult don't matter because i'm going to die eventually so i'm going to do whatever the fuck i want you know, my I I have a distinct impression of of my eighty two year old now uncle. Um, every time I would see him, every time I would hang out, he'd be like, "Ice cream, we're going to get ice cream," and he would be using my presence as a child as an excuse to go and get ice cream. He wanted fucking ice cream. My presence just enabled him to do that, right? But he cherished that childish portion of himself that was able to go and get ice cream. And he's like, "Yeah, no, it's not good for me, but I'm dying anyway. Who gives a shit?" <laughs> it was great. I think that that's, that's important, and I think that the show, by contrasting Hotaru and Komari and their perspectives on adulthood, makes that case pretty solidly. I think that it's really important to recognize that there is a child within you and to keep that child alive and awake, because I think doing so is, in part, one of the ways to have an antidote toward the bitterness of the world, which if you consume and wallow in the bitterness of the world, you will become bitter yourself, period, every, every damn time. And here's the other perspective. Komari was trying to act all grown up, so she ate sushi with wasabi, tears in her eyes the whole time. She did a dumb, stupid thing in order to try to be more like an adult. Hotaru doesn't try to be more like an adult. She just is more mature. And part of that maturity is accepting the silly things, right? Would it be a mature to eat sushi with wasabi when you don't like it? No, the mature thing would be to go to, to recognize I don't like this spicy wasabi. I'll eat the sushi the way that I want to eat the sushi. That's the mature way to go about it, right? The mature thing isn't to go to, this is an, a different thing, it's not mature to go to an Indian restaurant and ask them for the spiciest dish because you've got balls of steel. No, the mature thing is to recognize where your, where your limits are and to act within those limits and have a nice meal that you'll enjoy, right? Like, if that means getting medium spice instead of extra spicy, does that make you immature for getting less spicy food, knowing that it'll be miserable if you... No, the immature thing would be to get the spicy food because you're like, yeah, that's how adults act. That's immaturity. That's the silliness. Or to, like, I think that the making of the Komari dolls is super weird. It's super creepy. However, it is a childish kind of an act, right? But it's not something that she throws away, like... Getting rid of all your dolls and all of the things that you care about is something that I think uh, uh, a lot of kids do when they're adolescents, right? When they're like 15, 16. It's like, I don't need these stuffed animals. I hate them. Do you? Do you? Or are you just trying to be an adult who doesn't care about stuffed animals? Might you have a, a healthier mindset if you didn't get rid of all the things that you care about in the interest of becoming somebody who fits into some mold of what you think an adult is because i'll the the secret that's no secret everybody says it but it doesn't really sink in until you get there is that adults are all just children pretending not to be children acting like they fit right y you put on a suit and tie and you walk around on the in the the streets of a city all of the people around you are dumb idiot children as well they're just <laughs> they're just acting like they're not and a lot of them are going to take themselves super seriously. And I think that taking oneself seriously is an indication of not adulthood, of honestly, it's a form of childishness. And I think it leads to a, a lot of conflict and shit and ego and, and torment for individuals. It's really interesting. Okay, so here we go. It's gotten pretty dark. I'll walk you home, okay, Renchon? It's a deeply adult thing to do, isn't it? Recognize, this is a child. She's in need of some level of security. I should walk her home. It's out of my way, but I'll do it anyway. I'll protect, protect this person. Right? And give them company. 
It's em- it's empathetic. It's mature. It's forward thinking. It demonstrates the ability to put yourself in somebody else's shoes. It's it's all of these things, and it's a self sacrifice to some extent, right? Like she could get home faster and wouldn't have to do this task. Yada yada. Self sacrificing. That's an adult thing to do. It's the kind of thing that Komari wouldn't probably do. Now she probably would in this circumstance, but but you know the mindset is different. So she walks her home. They walk through all this stuff. I have to look this up. Urashima Taro's box. This has something to do with adulthood. Okay, so he spends what he believes to be several days with a princess, but when he returns to his home village, he discovers he's been gone for at least 100 years. When he opens the forbidden jeweled box, the Tamatebako, Tamatebako, um, he turns into an old man, given him, to him by the princess. Cool. So it's, it's um yeah, okay, it's a box and he turns old. So opening it partway would mean becoming partway, partially old. Cool. Mom said you were a grown-up, and you looked really awkward. I'm not that grown-up. I'm just normal. I act really childish around my mom in particular. I wish I could be more mature, really. Recognition of your childish side and willingness to accept it, I think, is more mature than the alternative. It's really good. It would be embarrassing. Fine. Fair enough. Uh, uh, this also, right? So we don't know who this is. It's not Dagashia. But just stopping and talking to a random, random lady on a scooter? The kind of thing that lots of children do? I don't think so. But then she opens the door and we go kind of goofy saccharine sweet with it just to demonstrate how, how goofy and quote-unquote childish she can be. Uh, jumping on the couch. Oh, I want snacks. Blah, 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 blah. It's a little over the top in that sense. And we see the dotingness of her mother. Ah, uh, the Katmari pencil holder. Yada, yada, yada. The cat show. Yada, yada, yada. Are these things childish? Following your desires? Doing things that you like? I don't feel like they're childish. The ability to play, it doesn't seem immature to me. This seems immature to me. <laughs> I'm reading fashion magazines. I'm such an adult. What? How does... Hmm. Obsessed with the trappings, not with the actuality. And, and like, it's just, it's just goofy. It's just very goofy. It's a great contrast. And we get the contrast here between the game and the Hanafuda as well. The classiness. Sleep here. Stay until dad gets home. Little blanket burrito. Little cuteness. Oh, you're such a kid. And then, of course, oh, nobody sees that I'm such a kid. And then she drinks the Amazake and it's sweet. Great. Because it's a sweet beverage and she's happy about it. So they see a little bit of it. I still think that the the overall contrast that's created there is just really, really exceptional, really solid. This was a good episode. It's got a good thematic through line, and it it makes good sense. Um, Also, a ton of silliness that was really lovely. The whole sosadzu or whatever they were. What? Just what? Okay, what? Okay, cool. I'm going to stop there, take a little breaky thingy, and come back for episode 12 in just a moment. See you in a sec. Peace. All right, welcome back. We're good to go for episode 12, the final episode of No Nun Biori Repeat. Let's get straight into it with a beep beep timer. Hmm. So this is that same day, huh? Uh, yep. Yep, she's already got it on her back. Why? Why would you like to be a human? How dare you? <laughs> wah, wah Hey, there you go.
Shit, I've got... I think I've got something in my eye. A uh, year out there, th there's a soccer emoji. Hello, bunnies. Uh, 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 for all fairness, I don't remember anything that actually occurred on the in this time. Oh, the, that looks weird. That is a weird looking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's a special stick? Uh, oh. No, no, no. Oh. I don't remember this. I'm. It, this might have happened, but I don't remember. <laughs> this might have happened in an episode, but I fully do not recall. Yay! Okay. <laughs> of course. For ruler fights. Okay. Okay. I've never seen bamboo shoot picking. I don't know what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Awesome. <laughs> now she's what now she's FOMOing. <laughs> Ooh, bamboo shoot sashimi? <laughs> Full hard ignore. Absolutely not. <laughs> Oi. Hey. 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 I'm talking here. <laughs> but you indicated reluctance. You better you better get a move on. Never said you would. <laughs> yeah. Completely fine. Hey, we're all going. Good little cut. Oh, Petchy. Let him smell ya. What? <sighs> don't don't give my dog a derogatory name. What are you doing? Alright, they've got a bunch of hoes. And also some tools. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hmm. Ah. Oh, shit, she's gonna take it seriously. Yep. Uh. 
Uh oh. Ah, I see. Yes, true. Mmm. You gotta be careful, dude. But she might be. I don't want to kill her. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, shit, we solved it. Good. Knock, knock. Are you a princess? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna ruin it. Petchy's a genius. It's gonna take a shit. <laughs> Maybe there's a... Oh, God! Petchy! No! <laughs> Do not try to bite that. <laughs> nice. Probably sleeping. Oh. <laughs> it's a little strong. Uh. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Ciao, ciao. Really? Don't that cause the more of the burning in your nose? <sighs> right? I don't know. Hey! The secret base. Oh! Very good, very good. Yes, this power... It's too great for anyone to wield. <laughs> I would love to play the nap game. Sounds great. Oh, that's a good one. Just hang out in the sun. Oh, I might do that. Well, this is... No, <laughs> I'm photosynthesizing. I know neither the Japanese nor the English etymology. Nope, oh, there's that track. It's been a while. Nostalgia, nostalgia. Atmosphere, atmosphere. You sure did. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's the idea. That's a good idea. There you go. Oh, hey. We got our fish. Ooh. Hmm. 
desalinated pickled cherry blossom leaves. Cool. What, does she want to help? Oh. Yeah. No, you don't want that flavor, bro. Yeah. Ugh. Please, please don't fuck with the traditional soccer emoji, please. Hi. Ah, oh, some fiddleheads. Good. Properly wrapped. Is she gonna fuck with one of them or something? Oh, man. Neighbor mom's talking. <laughs> but that's the point. Yeah, of course you are. Ugh. Yeah, say something fun. Uh oh. Hmm. Fun dream. That counts. Yeah, no, that was, that was fun. <sighs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never played this particular version of this game, but I understand. Uh, I'll go with you and we'll both get some. Yep. Yeah. Ah, boring chilling in the sun. Oh. Oh, don't go eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> Oh, this is going to get weird, isn't it? Oh, hello. Ikari Mono Boss? Oh, the carp. Exit Suguru. Soup. Soup. I forget his name fully. Waiting for the other two to come back with the tea. There they are. Yeah. Where'd they go? <laughs> Distraction. How long are we going to do this one shot? Or this one take? <laughs> <laughs> oh god damn it now we can go nice that was a fun sequence pretty weird pretty fun pretty cool mm. nice oh he's coming Oh. 
cute. Like a little rattle. Nice. No. Sweets first. Nice. Nice. Oh, there's still four minutes left. That's the ED song, but we're going to go through. Cool. Uh -huh. Complete ignore. Oh. Okay. Just lost in the moment. There we go. Wow, a smile. Weird. Oh, that's different. Yeah. Tradition. It has begun. Oh, and that's the opening sequence. First frame, almost. It's very similar. bring it all the way back I like this rendition a lot ooh woof and the yep good choice Repeat <laughs>
Yep. Really good. Pull all the emotions from the entire season into this one one ending sequence. It's great. Still like a minute left, though. 30 seconds. A thank you note or... Oh, a little moment. Oh, just going to fade to white? Very well. I thought it would be a little joke. Very nice. Boom. Perfect ending episode. Um, I, I assume that there's an OVA. I don't care for right now. Perfect ending episode. I love this rendition of the uh, ending song. It's got so much more emotion. And I think more uh, voice actresses singing. And I love the way that they, the the shot selection, the choices of all these moments to put in. Um, and the way that they chose to sync up the jump to the more somber tone with uh, uh, Rangay standing in front of the, the, the grave of the, the, little, the little sea creatures or whatever. Um, and, and we get a little bit more somber into the music for that sequence and then, and then into the joy again, it kicks back in as, as we show the same thing. I, I think this is a really excellent ending sequence and I think I'm going to be really fast about my review of it, but I think this is an excellent ending episode because it nails the emotional beats that are necessary. It nails a little bit of the humorous aspect, nails a little bit of the, the characterization of everybody and their ability to be together. This whole sequence, it gives us a little bit of the sort of confusion and Komari's childishness and, and good goofiness between the characters, competitiveness between some other characters, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, uh, using the sun basking thing, we get a bunch of time where the characters just sit together being quiet and calm, which is great. There's food stuff, which is important for the nature of the show. This one take is cool. It's weird, but it's kind of cool. It's a cool idea. You know, we do we do this shot that for like five minutes is on the same fucking shot, right? Starting from 13.30 on till... 1730 four minutes fine it's cool it's it's a cool idea and it's silly and fun and i think it's good and i think that we also over the course of the episode bring back a bunch of musical cues that have specific emotional weight that's been generated over the course of the show and bringing them each back in turn creates this um sort of mosaic feeling this montage -y feel to this episode in particular that evokes the emotions of all the rest of the season before it and i think that's really excellent and then it d doubles down and does it again via the ending sequence doing an expanded version of the ending song with a, an actual literal montage that brings us into the emotions of each episode. I think that's excellent. I think that's, that's a great way to end a show like this, where you've got this sort of um, anthology of different little mini stories in a, in a context, and all you're creating is this atmospheric feeling, this emotional uh, uh, space to exist in, and you just want to bring your audience back into it and keep them in it for a last 20 minutes or so. I think this was a great way to do that, and I think Nonon Biore nailed their final episode for Nonon Biore Repeat. Boom. Thumbs up from me. That's going to be it. That's the whole That's the whole deal, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry about all the delays and stuff, but this has been No No Beery Repeat. I'll see you at some point in the future when I decide what to do next, whether that will be vacation. I think it might be. We'll, we'll see. Peace.